So in this uh, talk, we're going to discuss the actual steps of the genetic algorithm. So here's the overview of the algorithm. Step zero, you create a random population. Step one, you evaluate the individuals in that population. How well do each do at solving the problem? Now, it might be possible even in that first step, you identify an individual that perfectly solves the problem, right? Uh, then if that's the case, terminate, right? You're done. Step two, select the individuals who will move into the next generation. Step three, evolve the next generation. And then you go to step one and you keep doing this until some goal criteria is met. Now, it could be evolving to a particular, identifying the best individual. More often than not, we do it by the number of generations. We say, for instance, that the population will run for 100 generations and then stop because we don't have enough of a, mind, a knowledge about what the best possible solution is. So step zero, generate random strings of a fixed length from a fixed alphabet, usually binary. Very simple, right? And you can imagine how each of these strings, right, could be the encoding of a particular beta. Now imagine, for instance, that we have a simple line that's a regression and we have two beta coefficients. And so we just split this in half and we, this is one of them, this is one of them, and we just kind of evolve those over time. Now let's take an even simpler problem. Let's talk about the max ones problem, right? So in the max ones problem, we're just trying to find the individual that has the maximum number of ones in its string, right? So that's the case that we're gonna pass each individual through a fitness function to see how well they achieve a desired goal, in this case, the max ones. So A has seven elevenths, B has four elevenths, and C has seven elevenths, right? That if they had one, if they had 11 ones, right? Then it'd be 11 over 11 and they'd be the best. So if a goal criteria has been met, we can either either by the number of generations or fitness, we terminate as I discussed, but otherwise we keep going. So step two, we're gonna select the members to become part of the new generation. Now, the reason why we do this is because we, we can't allow all the individuals to pass over to the next generation. Instead, some of them are gonna be more likely to pass over. They're gonna be, have a higher probability of reproduction into the next generation, right? Um, and this allows, you know, the survival of the fittest, essentially, right? And there's two basic ways that are often done uh, for selection. One is tournament selection, where we said tournament of size three, five, or seven, and we just randomly choose across all individuals those tournament, and then we, we move the one into the next generation that has the highest fitness, right? And now, as you can see, that still has the probability of selecting some of the lowest end ones. It won't select the lowest, possible solution, right? But if, for instance, um, you know, all, all the entrants into the tournament all have very low fitness values, right? One of them will still have the highest value and that one will go on to the next generation. The other way is roulette wheel selection. In roulette wheel selection, we build a roulette wheel, right? That has each of the parts of the wheel, the slices of the pie of that wheel is the size proportionately of the fitness of that individual. And then we spin the wheel and we choose one and that's the one we see uh, coming up. We, we choose to propagate to the next generation. So tournament selection, as I mentioned, let T be a set of individuals for popular P, chosen with replacement. Select the individual I of T that maximizes F of I where F of I is the fitness of the individual. By the way, if you do it with replacement, the lowest possible individual has a very weak probability of continuing to go on because you could choose that same lowest individual every single time and obviously it will propagate it to the next one. You can also do it without replacement, in which case it, it won't necessarily make it onto the next, it won't make it onto the next generation. So here's kind of a pictorial demonstration of, of tournament selection. We chose A and then B twice. A has a score of 711, so it's the one that propagates. Roulette selection, on the other hand, we're going to let X be a random uniform variable from 0 to 1. We're going to let the sum of F be the sum of the fitnesses of all individuals from the population. And for each individual I in P randomly supported, so, sorted, right, we're going to ask if X is greater than F of I divided by that sum of F, then X equals X minus F of I, so we subtract off some of the sum, right? Otherwise, we're going to return I. Right. So in other words, essentially, we're, gonna, we're we're picking a spot in that wheel to stop on. And we're just kind of going through each individual. And if they're less than that spot, they're less than that spot. Then we're getting rid of them. And then whatever individual we end up on, that's the individual we propagate to the next generation. So, you know, pictorially, this is a lot easier to demonstrate. Right. You can imagine the A and C because they're sevenths, elevenths. Right. 
have a slightly higher fitness than B, so they have to he has, the B has the smaller slice of the pie. And when we spin it, there's still a probability that B is going to get selected, so we propagate that over into the next generation. Step three is evolution. So now, right, we've selected all the individuals who are going to move over to the next population, right? Um, and but we still have to decide how we're going to move them over, right? One solution is that we're going to do cloning, right? And which means we're going to leave the individual alone. Typically, you know, the, the standard numbers I was taught when I was in grad school is that 70% of the population is usually cloned, where we just move it over directly as it is. But the more interesting aspect is the other 30%, which is crossover, right? So what we do with crossover is we take two individuals and we split them in half, recombine them, and create a new child individual or a pair of child individuals from that parent, right? Uh, and we move that individual into the next generation. And then finally, we run mutation across the whole population, usually at a per bit level, to kind of add some new individuals, which means that the clones don't necessarily clone perfectly. Sometimes they have small changes to them. So cloning, exactly as it sounds, the parent, the child is the parent, right? Crossover, right? Crossover is a little more difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to first choose two individuals. In this case, we chose A and B. And then we cr choose a crossover point between those two individuals. In this case, we choose that between the fourth and the fifth uh, number, right? And so then we create two individuals, AB, which starts with A and ends with B, and BA, which starts with B and ends with A. As you notice, neither of these individuals is as good as A, but neither of these individuals is as bad as B. And that doesn't necessarily happen. It can be that both children are worse or both children are better. It's just always a matter of kind of where you choose that crossover point. And that's a random choice, right? But you create slightly different individuals. You now have some individuals who have different ones in different places than others, right? Um, yeah. Mutation just goes through and flips a bit. So the parent, you know, you just apply the mutation, you go through and you flip a bit. And when you bring the individual over, um, you have this new bed. So this one went from six elevens to five elevens. In this case, it's not a, it's a deleterious mutation is what we would call this. Uh, but it's, um, still a mutation that's applied. So that's the basic genetic algorithm. And with that, we're going to wrap this part up. Um, and I'm going to show you how to use uh, how do you actually use the, the GA algorithm for something like machine learning and classification?